Welcome to the course on principles of vibration control. Today we are going to cover some of the basics of active vibration control and let us discuss that in the board itself. So, we are going to talk about basics of active vibration control. To discuss this, let us consider a simple block diagram of a vibrating system as a plant. So, first we will take up block diagram of an open loop vibrating system. Let us see how we can translate the kind of a graphical representation of an open loop system in terms of a block diagram. So, we have a mass m k is the stiffness, c is the damping and this is moving on a frictionless wheel and let us say that I am applying a force F d to the mass and it is getting displaced towards this direction as X t. Also this F t is actually periodic in nature and we can write it as something like F e raised to the power j omega t where F is the amplitude and e raised to the power j omega t talks about the harmonic variation of the system. Now, this type of a system, if I have to represent it in terms of a block diagram, how will it come up? So, we have to have a plant here, this is also known as plant and that plant is actually this system and we have an excitation force F t working on the plant and the plant is showing a response which is X t. Now, the point is what goes inside this block diagram? To find that out, we will have to first write down the equation of motion of the system which can be written as I am not going into the free body diagram anymore. We have discussed about it many times. So, we can write it as m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equals to f t. Now, this is a time domain ordinary differential equation. We need to convert it into an algebraic equation by using Laplace transformation, by using Laplace transformation and considering zero initial condition, zero initial condition. We can write this in the form of S square m x s plus c s c x s plus k x s equals to f bar s. In other words, we can also write it as x s times s square m plus s c plus k equals to f bar s or in other words x s equals to f bar s divided by s square m plus s c plus k. If I want to find out the transfer function which is output x s over f bar s 
which is the input to the system. So, this is the input and this is output. Then this would become 1 over a square m plus s c plus k. Now, I can do a little more work on it. I can actually write it in terms of the modal coordinates of the system by dividing all these parameters with respect to say for example, m if I divide it. So, it will be 1 over m and here it will be s square plus s c over m plus k over m. And that would mean that we can actually try to find out that what are these other two things in terms of the modal parameters. We know that the natural frequency of a single degree of freedom system omega n is square root of k by m. In other words, omega n square is actually k by m. So, this is known to us and also we know that c by m can be written in terms of 2 zeta omega n. You can cross check it, it is 2 times c over c c which is 2 root k m times square root of k by m which means this k and this k gets cancelled, 2 to cancel and we are going to get c by m and that means this is also acceptable for us along with omega n square equals to k by m. So, we can very nicely substitute these things in terms of the modal parameters. The denominator s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square. So, that is what we are going to get from this and hence I can actually write this as something like in terms of the frequency domain f par s here and x t is x s here and I can write this as the plant structure of a constant let us call this 1 over m in inertia as a constant some plant constant let us call it with k p or just simply k. So, you can write it as k over s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square. Now, that is what we will call the transfer function representation or the block diagram of the system. <laughs> if we look at this particular equation, we focus on the denominator itself. There are several things that we can conclude from this denominator. What we can conclude for example, is that if we equate this denominator s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square equals to 0 then this is what will give us the characteristic equation of the system. This will be the characteristic equation. Now, if I solve this characteristic equations, I may get two roots s 1 and s 2. And these two roots can be something like in case of uh, you know a stable system minus alpha plus minus j omega t. We can try to get a graphical representation of the system now with respect to these two roots. So, let us try to plot these two roots of this second order system and see what does it mean for us in terms of vibration control. So, if I plot these two roots, what I am going to see is that we can start with an assumption that in the generalized case 
there is a real part and there is an imaginary part of these two roots. Now, there are several possibilities of the roots. First of all, can this roots be in this side? No. If we consider, then it will be an unstable system. Now, generally a vibrating system will not be unstable on its own. So, when, uh, when we consider the passive system, the roots will not be on the right up plane. It may happen that the roots will be here. If it happens like that, that means if the alpha part will be 0 and it will only have the imaginary part and in such a case the corresponding situation is called undamped vibration. So, that would mean that in terms of the time domain, the response of the system x t. So, x t with respect to time itself. So, this side is, is with respect to the time. If I plot it, it will be typical of an undamped system. That is what it will be once the roots are on the imaginary axis. Now, if the roots change from this location to let us say as pair of complex poles in the left top plane, right top plane the roots are not there, but these two roots are in the left top plane. In that case what we will see is that these roots are going to show a different type of a response. It is going to come down exponentially with respect to time. So, there is an exponential profile and that is corresponding to when the roots are we will say under damped roots. So, these are under damped. This is the case which you will frequently observe in terms of vibration control. Of course, in extreme cases it can be that the roots are directly on the uh, real axis itself and those type of responses in which it will be on the real axis itself t and x t and the vibration will essentially you know start and die down and it can be if it is say for example, a pair in this real axis then it will be an over dam system. So, it can happen that the vibration will actually dry down. So, these cases are actually critical and so this is the case of let us say this is the case of over damped system and this is the case of critically damped system. This cases will not come across usually, but in active control it can happen that post active control this case may happen to the system critical damping. Now, considering that the most important case that you are going to come across is the case of an under damped situation. So, there are certain things that we can now try to see that what is this alpha and what is this omega d first of all. So, naturally this distance is alpha so you can see and this ordinate is actually omega d. So, you can graphically place you know from the root where the system is and if I do like that then several things we can conclude from it. Say for example, if you look at it then that what is this radial distance from the origin till this point you will see that this is nothing but omega n. You can verify it because you know that omega d is equals to omega n into square root of 1 minus zeta square. Now, this alpha this distance alpha equals to actually zeta omega n. So, you can see that omega d 
square plus zeta square omega n square equals to omega n square that is the Pythagoras law. So, you can see that omega d square which is this distance plus zeta square omega n square is going to give you this radial distance that is the omega n itself. So, that means the placement of this particular you know pole depends on uh, the, nat the natural frequency. If the natural frequency is very high then it will be far away, if it is very close to 0 etcetera then it will be closer to the origin. The second thing that we can also conclude from here is that what is this slope theta? If you take a tan theta then as per our definition the tan theta is zeta omega n divided by omega n into square root of 1 minus zeta square which will be zeta because omega n is not equal to 0 you can cancel it. So, zeta over square root of 1 minus zeta square and that means that for small zeta for small zeta tan theta is approximately zeta itself because you can neglect then this zeta square. So, it will be approximately zeta. So, this this slope actually gives us the measure of the damping that that is why when the slope is 0 then you have an undamped vibration and as it is rotating as it is rotating towards this direction and the roots are reaching here on the real axis you have you know critical damped and over damped conditions. So, that is how this slope tells us about the damping and the radial distance text tells us about the natural frequency of the system. So, these several implications we have to keep in our mind because when we will be judging the performance of a system then these uh, things will be important for us. Now, keeping this point in mind let us try to find out what are the possibilities for us in terms of developing different types of active controller under the domain of first of all classical control system. So, first of all we will look into classical control systems and what we will see is that there are three or four possibilities for us corresponding to the classical control system. So, this is an open loop configuration. Now, in the classical control we will go for closed loop systems. Of course, there is one system which is not totally closed loop. So, we will call that as feed forward system. What we will see is that there are four such possibilities to build up the controllers for us. So, one possibility is the one which we will be discussing most that you have a reference signal R s let us say positive and you have a controller here. So, let us call it something like K C s and then we have the plant here that plant is our k over s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square and then that is the output we will tell the output as c s let us say and then we have a sensor here that is what is h s and we are taking that sense signal back that is with a negative feedback control. So, keep in mind that this is the controller. Where is my actuator? The actuator can be actually integrated with this plant itself. So, this is the plant and this is what is our sensor. The actuator can be 
in terms of a simple gain here it can be adjusted or it can have a complete transfer function of the system. But this is one system which we will call it as a feedback control system. This is the most robust system that means even if there is some disturbance in the system it can be proved that this works much better than any other possible systems. However, there are several varieties of the for example, you can have a fit forward system and the fit forward system works very well when you know what is the disturbance the system will be subjected to. So, for this kind of a system, we have the reference signal here and then suppose it has there is a disturbance here d s and that disturbance is coming to the summing junction here. So, that is the positive part of it and then the net output we are going to call these many a times this transfer function simply as g s. So, this is going to the g s and the g s is giving me an output c s of the system. Now, this disturbance is coming. So, I need to reject it and if I know the model of the system, I can actually develop a transfer function which will exactly replicate the disturbance by the phase and the gain and it is going to work on it. So, that the effect of the disturbance is gone and then you know the system is actually free from the disturbance. So, this is what is known as a feed forward system. However, the condition is that CFS FFS that is the gain for the fit forward system must match the gain and the phase of the DS. So, you must have the complete knowledge of it. Sometimes you may not have that. In that case, we would rather go for a system which is a hybrid control system. So, that would look something like this. Let us try to draw that kind of a system. So, you have a R s coming up, reference signal positive and you have a feed forward here. So, let us call these to be C f f s that is what is our feed forward loop that is going and working. So, this is a positive part and let us say this is how my disturbance is coming and we have a summing junction here. Now, on root we have this feedback gain that is what is our KCS. So, our KCS is coming here, this is positive, this is positive in the summing junction. Okay, and if we consider this to be positive, then this will be negative. That is what is our d s c f f s cancelling each other and then we have the uh, you know k c s coming up and this system is going to my plant which is g s and then that I am going to take out that c s. I am going to put a H s here and then I am going to put it back here with a negative sign. So, here we get the advantage of both fit forward. So, the top part is the fit forward loop and the bottom part is the feedback loop. So, this is a hybrid control system. We can have one more variation of the system which is actually known as a notch filter 
of a system. So, which is uh, something like an extension of the feedback control system. So, let us try to draw this last system and for that we have R s as the reference signal, we have the summing junction as usual, we have the error which first goes through a notch filter. So, C notch s, then it goes to the controller feedback controller K C s, then it goes to the plant that is G s and we have the output of the plant C s that comes back. We have a gain here for the sensor H s the transfer function and that closes the loop. So, this is feedback control with notch filter. So, thus there are this 1, 2, 3 and 4, uh, 4 basic types of classical active vibration control system that is possible you know for us to design. Now, we will however, look into only one of these systems that is this particular system and let us try to see that what happens to this particular system if I choose if I make certain simplified assumptions and then try to see what will happen to the response of this particular system. So, in this case we will make two assumptions, one is that this H s will consider it to be unity. That means, the sensor will have no dynamics, it will be simply proportionately feeding back the output and compare it with the R s and then the whole system will run. So, that is one thing and secondly this is tabulated in such a manner that this simply becomes unity for us calibrated in such a manner and that is what let us say is the very simplified system for us. Now, for this kind of a system let us first consider the K C s as a proportional gain. So, just a constant gain which is known as the proportional gain. That means, K C s as simply a constant K p. Under such conditions, what will be the closed loop transfer function C L T f which we have discussed in the last class that it is actually K p g divided by 1 plus k p g. That is what is by closed loop transfer function. Remember that the h is unity here. That is why it is k p g over 1 plus k p g. So, if I write we know the structure of g. So, that means it will become k p and below what we are going to see is s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square plus k p. In other words, the closed loop transfer function will be simply k p over s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus something which we may call it as the changed natural frequency omega bar square, where omega bar square is actually omega n square plus k p. Now, because this is additive in nature, so we can see that with the help of the proportional gain, we can actually increase the new closed loop natural frequency of the system, which means we can actually the proportional gain can actually increase the stiffness of the system. So, whenever we have a vibrating condition where we do not go up to resonance that means, it is controlled by stiffness 
we can use the proportional gain technique very well under such a case. So, if I try to draw this in terms of something which the controller designers very routinely do, they call it to be root locus diagram. Then this is our real of s and this is what is our imaginary of s and we will call this as the s plane and then both of our roots will be initially placed somewhere like this and as you are increasing the gain they are going this is the closed loop direction. So, that means for a particular gain what you are going to get is maybe the closed loop pole locations will be like this and what it means is that this distance from the origin is increasing. If you remember this is what we call the natural frequency of the system correct. So, this distance the omega n bar the new natural frequency with respect to the earlier natural frequency which was this one you can see that that is increasing at the cost of what at the cost of damping of course, because the damping is more earlier and the damping is less here. So, proportional but does not matter because if you think of the vibration control system uh, the frequency versus the transfer function and I told you that you know we, we are this is the region which is actually damping controlled and if you are somewhere here if your excitation frequency is away from the natural frequency then damping you do not bothered about and what you are bothered about is that you got a good stiffness in the bargain and hence you have a good vibration control. But let us say there is a situation where I am somewhere here. So, what I am going to do? In that case I will definitely go for the uh, you know velocity feedback in the system and in that case I will definitely go for the uh, gain which is not simply proportional, but something more than that. So, we can change that gain in terms of something like a k d s where k d s is actually uh, is actually our uh, differential gain system. So, we have proportional integrated and derivative control. So, let us call it the derivative gain and hence the k d s if I get in this manner then this will slightly change it will become k d s g here also this will change it will become s k d g. So, here also it will change this fellow would now become plus s k d plus s k d and here also it is s k d that is what will happen to the system. So, we are going to get no change in terms of the natural frequency it will be omega n square. However, we are going to get one new term here which is s k d and here we will be having s k d. Now, if I focus once again at the denominator here then this new denominator is telling us that we are going to have a system which is something like which has a changed damping. So, it will be plus s 2 zeta omega n plus k d and then we have omega n square. 
Now that means if I have a derivative gain, then instead of this type of a change, the change that may happen to the system, let us try to figure it out that how it would look like. So, we have the initial placement of the system, but now we are going to have a 0 here. So, let us say we have a 0 here and this were the two pole systems and as we increase the gain k, these two poles will very quickly come towards the real axis and one will go to meet this 0 and the other will go away. So, what it will mean is that with this new system, I can have many different types of closed loop performance, I can have critical damping when the poles will be here, I can have uh, you know over damped system when the poles will be like this, I can have higher damping which is what generally we will try to do where we will sacrifice to some extent the natural frequency the of the system, the new natural frequency of the system and that we will do in terms of the damping because the damping has now increased from this much of an angle to this angle. So, we are increasing the damping, we are giving up the stiffness a little bit does not matter because we are once again if you figure it out that we are in such a case we are mostly in this domain in the damping control domain of the system. So, we can do that and then we can actually uh, design our system accordingly. Now, what happens is that sometimes this kind of systems may also become very fluffy system, you know they do not stabilize very fast etcetera. So, we can try for another system which is known as k i over s and we call that to be an integral control system. So, then it will be k i over s, so k g k i over s times 1 plus k i over s. This type of systems we may get and if we try to work out for this system, then it would look something like we have the g as 1 over s square. So, that will be there. So, let us say we put that uh, in the g part. So, we have this complete formulation with us as an additional term 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square. And here we have this s coming up here. So, that means uh, there will be this s and this s will actually cancel. So, this will be s plus k i So, these s s are uh, going to cancel with each other, each other. So, we have s plus k i uh, and over s plus k i over uh, s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square and this whole thing multiplied by this and as a result we are going to get a slightly higher order system because these two are going to cancel and we are going to get a system which will be like s cube plus 2 zeta omega n s square plus omega n square s plus k i. So, this is no longer a second order system, but we are going to get a higher order system here and that sometimes helps us in terms of various types of you know uh, design of a system where the uh, steady state performance for example, 
can be actually improved or if there is a input which is uh, having something like a higher order things like parabolic inputs etcetera, this system will be able to follow such a case. So, in this case depending on various types of placements of the systems you may have three poles like this and hence uh, you can have something like this where the two poles are going on this line and the third pole will be going in this particular direction. So, this kind of systems will actually help in terms of the steady state response of the system. This, this is known as our integral control. Now, many times we can actually have a kind of a combination of all of them together. So, we can have a PID control and I have already shown you one example where we have shown that how such a PID controller system would work where you have both KP and times you have a KDS and let us say sometimes we add a constant to it and we have a Ki, uh, we have a Ki gain here and that gain supported by S itself. So, we can get a complete you know proportional integral and derivative controller of the system. So, that is how we can actually build up the classical control systems. So, this is where we will close in this particular discussions and in the next discussion we will talk about modern control systems. Thank you.